Hello and welcome to another video brought to you by KeepsakeCrafts.net and AllFreeJewelryMaking.com. Today we're going to be making this triple strand chain necklace full of tangerine orange colored bead dangles. So to make this necklace you will need four pieces of chain. An 18, a 16, a 13, and then an 8 inch, or actually two 4 inch pieces to go around the back. You'll also need a lobster clasp. Here I'm using two 8 millimeter split rings. And then you'll need an assortment of beads. I actually started with these tangerine colored beads and just kind of started laying them out. And I brought in these kind of toffee colored ones. And just for something different in shape and texture, I have these champagne colored pearls. So this is a fun opportunity to just go through your bead supply and pull out an assortment that you like. You'll also need some head pins. You'll need two pairs of chain nose pliers, a pair of round nose pliers, and wire cutters. So here are a few head pins. These are nice long three inch head pins which will actually be quite handy in a minute. And the way you make the bead dangles for your necklace is you slide it through the hole of the head pin. Take a nice small pair of chain nose pliers and grasp the wire right above the bead and bend it down at a 90 degree angle just like that. Then go ahead and take round nose pliers and put those right in that bend and wrap the wire around the rounded part and it will only <laughs> zing, it will only go about this far and you won't be able to go anymore. But then just reposition your round nose pliers and finish that loop so that it's going back again at a 90 degree angle. Get a nice pair of flush cut wire cutters and cut the wire off right where it meets the first part of the wire. Now actually I'm going to save this piece of wire uh, this piece of head pin, I suppose, but it's now just a piece of wire without a head or a loop. And I'm going to use it to wrap the leaves. Notice often when you finish a wrap, it does kind of tilt to one side. Just go ahead and grab it tightly with your round nose pliers and give it a twist. Twist and straighten it out. So there's one. For leaves, this also works for teardrop shapes. Uh, anything that's drilled off center, you need a piece of wire rather than a head pin. And you need one about two and a quarter inches long is good. So these, like I said, these nice long three inch head pins actually leave just the right amount of excess. So put your bead at about the one third mark of your piece of wire and bend both ends up to make a U shape and then continue bending them so they cross over each other and meet as close as possible to the top of the bead in an X. Then use your chain nose pliers to bend these up at an angle. And the angle should be perpendicular to the wire that's going through the center of the bead. Or adjust it however you need to depending on the shape of the bead. Now trim the shorter one off to about an eighth of an inch. That's all you need there. And then this next part is actually very similar to what we just did with the regular bead. Go ahead and grab it right at that bend. Bend it at a 90 degree angle. Grab it with round nose pliers. 
wrap around the wrong part as far as it'll go, reposition, wrap some more, bring it to a 90 degree angle. And now, instead of cutting it off here like we did with the other ones, I'm going to just wrap the rest of this wire. It helps to hold on to it, hold on to that loop with your round nose pliers. And go ahead and wrap. down that stem, you could call it, that you left. And a tip here is don't skimp on the length of your wire. I happen to have just enough here to go around, but if you try to get away with the piece of wire that's too short, it will make you crazy. So it really isn't worth it. And that one actually broke off on me. And it's a good idea to feel with your finger, see if there's a rough edge. If uh, trim it with wire cutters close because they usually don't break off for you like that. If there's a rough edge you can use a file. And that is how you wrap the leaves. Now when stringing these onto the chain you can do this in one of two ways. My preferred way is to have an open loop like this Open it up with your chain of pliers and then hook it onto a chain of your necklace. Close up the loop, make sure it's secure so you don't lose your bead, and there's one dangle on your chain. However, you can see that this one, I already closed up the loop. So what you'll need to do is use your chain nose pliers to open the chain that you want it to go onto, just the way you would open a jump ring. Open it just a tiny amount, just enough to get that wire in there, and then pop it on and close it up. So repeat for all your beads, and add them to just about the center third of this piece of chain, the center maybe four or five inches, and just add whatever you like. So now here we are. I've made dangles of all the beads that I had, or all the ones that I want, and have attached them to this one shorter length of chain, the 13 inch length of chain. And now it's simply a matter of putting them all together. Now you could use jump rings for this, but it's a bit of weight, so I've decided to go ahead and use split rings. So when you thread them on, you have to be careful not to twist these and to put them on in the correct order. So I'm going to start with one, and these are oval chains, so you just have to find which end has the split. And it's the same as a jump ring. Grab one side with your chain nose pliers, grab the other side with another pair, and twist to open. Slip on your split ring. Well, oh, sorry about that. My camera cut out on me. But anyways, you just go ahead and treat the ends of the links like you would a jump ring. Open it up and then attach it to the ring holding your three chains. And then to that, I actually decided to add a jump ring and put a lobster clasp on that. And then the same on the other end. Add your chain to your split ring, and then I put a jump ring over here, and there's your necklace. So here's another look at the necklace we made today. As you can see, it can be quite a statement piece, and it's really fairly simple. The most complicated work is simply making all of the dangles, but that's what gives it that kind of lush, luxurious feel, is having it so chock full of an assortment of dangles. So I hope you've enjoyed this project and that you'll give it a try on your own. For more ideas and inspiration in jewelry and other crafts, please be sure to check out keepsakecrafts.net. Thanks for watching.